and we are live. Yay! Good morning, everybody. Good morning, and welcome to Thursday's episode of Viva Gas con Leche. I am Dr. Lori Monaco from Align Yourself, Inc. I am a life coach specializing in transformation and mindfulness practice. I am a speaker. I am a chiropractor slash holistic practitioner, and I am the badass Buddha. Good morning, and good morning, Gladiator Guru. I'm so happy to have you back. Good morning, mi gente. I hope everybody is doing marvelous. I am doing... I. I'm coming to you from Tampa, Florida. I am a spiritual and creative healing life coach. I am La Gitana, the gypsy, the free wanderlust person who's been stuck right now. I'm your writer, your painter. I am your gladiator guru. Welcome to Viva Café con Leche. Namaste. We missed you. What we so so obviously you could still tell that um Guru is still, she's not feeling well. And what a trooper. She really does not feel well this morning, but she came on anyway. So we please everybody send your love to her. Throw hearts up as much as possible because. Send me healing, healing hugs. She looks pretty good though for someone who's <laughs> not feeling well. So that kudos for that, um, I have to say. Um, so yeah, she wasn't feeling well Tuesday. So um, we opted to cancel, or should I say I opted? She was so like feeling lousy and she could barely even have a conversation through text. Um, and it's not the same without her. And I, uh, it's not that I couldn't hold the show on my own. I just didn't think it would have the same flair. So we canceled and, um, but I'm glad you're back. I'm, I, I know you're not feeling well. So luckily we have an extra guest on today. It's Thursday, so you won't have to talk as much. Which is yeah, I'm happy to be back. This is, you know, Viva is my passion. And it's like something was missing. And then uh, people were calling me like, you must really be sick if you didn't do your Viva today. And yeah. I was like, yeah, but you know, we pushed through it. Um, and here we are, because this is what we have to do. You have to push through it, go around it, climb over that bitch and get to where you got to <laughs> get to. Good morning, George. Namaste, buenos dias. And we do have people sending love. So Michelle Houston is on. Good morning, ladies. Margie, how are you feeling? She's asking. Uh, Tiffany Bryan, good morning, beautiful ladies. So glad I could join you. Um, Michelle said, we missed you. Tiffany said, feel better and sending you good vibes and hugs. Thank you. I need them. Fabulous, fabulous. So uh, what coffee are you drinking this morning? Let's talk coffee. Um, so I started to, and I know Margie was going to start, but she wasn't feeling well. We are going to really start pushing out the pictures of mugs and the pictures of you holding your mug. And uh, I, we're going to start putting our own pictures. We're going to start taking ourselves with our mugs in different places. And we want you to do that as well. Even if you're shopping and you see a mug you like in a store, just take a picture of yourself with a mug. You know, it doesn't have to actually have coffee in it. But... Um, send us these we want to really start getting um just everybody into the vibe of this like we just want people to send these pictures even if you want to send it holding a bag of coffee that you really like too it doesn't even have to be a cup because it's not just about the coffee challenge it's the coffee cup challenge it's about celebrating the drinking of coffee and the love of coffee and okay so even those of you that don't drink coffee that still like the show and just have tea then just put your cup up you know, you're still having some a hot beverage in here, and maybe there's a lot of liquor in your hot beverage. I don't. There's no judgment here. So, um, but I wish I had some brandy right now. <laughs> See, if you were near me, I would have made you my special hot toddy, which is I make it with turmeric, which is really good for its natural antibacterial, antiviral. Um, but yes, I do put brandy in it. I have this whole concoction that I always make for myself. When I, the minute I start feeling something coming on and that sucker just never gets a chance to get in there. So, um, but what coffee are you drinking this morning, sweetie? I am drinking Café La Jave. And nice. it's, you know, I love Bustelo. Sometimes Bustelo has a, an after bitter taste, but I normally put salt in my grounds before I brew it. Um, and then this one is so far been good. Um, so I've been drinking this lately only because my niece bought me these extra large ones, so they do last a little longer. 
So I've been drinking that. That's been um, the one for now. Does the salt help with the bitterness? Yeah. Yeah, you put a pinch of salt in your ground before it gets brewed. That's I interesting. Do, I knew I do, you said it before, but it kind of didn't register. So I, I think I wouldn't mind trying that. I do, um, I do the slow brew. I have that little um, pot that you pour over the grounds. And it's this beautiful little vase that it collects the coffee in. But I put um, clove powder and a little bit of cinnamon and then a pinch of salt in my ground. And then I put cinnamon um, in when the coffee's done. But yeah, that's how I do it. So there's no bitter or aftertaste to it. Keep talking because I'm, I'm sending a message to Dory. <laughs> yeah, so that's how I brew my coffee. So whoever's in the area and you want some authentic, Abuelita's authentic cafe con leche come over. Um, as Carmen would say, oh, look, Carmen, good morning. Ruthie, Jazzy, good morning. As they, Carmen would say, I take forever brewing coffee, but it'll be the best weight of your life. I can guarantee that. Carmen's on this morning. Yeah. Carmen's on. Carmen's in Buenos the dias. house. <laughs> and uh, Michelle apparently is very excited to have Dory on. Um, that's fantastic that you know Dory because um, our guest today, Dory DiCarlo from Word of Mom Radio, she's a, fa a fantastic human. Like she's just so much fun and she's so um, easygoing and just full of love. So she's perfect for the conversation that we're going to have today, which is being kind and showing love, which we will get to in about five minutes. So, um, and we're, so let me talk about what I'm drinking today. So I have one of my new mugs too. This is another one. Uh, nice. Is it backwards? It. Is no, it, you, okay. Well. Okay. Is it backwards? Because I, I know it's show, it's showing backwards on my end, which kind of stinks, but it says you can. No, no, we, I, it okay, comes good. out. Um, and I'm drinking <laughs> Bones Coffee Company. And uh, I bought regular, I bought maple bacon because I used to do my flavored coffees. And this one is uh, Electric Unicorn, which I talked about the other day, which is, it tastes, it's fruity cereal and it really does taste like that. Um, I do love their coffee. Um, the maple bacon, that wasn't really my favorite, which is funny because it's, a, it's actually quite popular with their, uh, their tribe of people, um, but it's still fantastic. It's just the fruity one is really good. And uh, their regular coffee is absolutely fantastic. So I do, I really do. I'm liking their coffee. I just love your enthusiasm at all those flavored coffees. <laughs> oh, Maron, is it, is it at least like, like dark or is it just like light flavor coffee? So they are, I believe, medium roast. I, I love your enthusiasm because I, I would... Uh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> I, I'm not really a. Um, I like. I'll admit, I'm not. Like I, I can't wait to have your coffee. Like I cannot wait till we get together and ha I have your coffee because I've never had your coffee yet. But um, I'm traditionally not a dark roast person, and uh, I tend to like. It got me it, uh, just recently. I got into medium roast. Light roast was always my thing. I was like this pathetic lightweight coffee person, um, but. I am noticing the differences with coffee, like just trying different coffees, knowing which brands are, are better and which, you know, um, but I wouldn't, I can't wait. I can't wait to have your coffee. I love that you, I would not hear about these coffees or these flavors had it not been for you. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I love the fact that we are different in that aspect because um, I just, I would not hear about it. it would, you know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I I stick to espresso Italian. Like I love Levanza coffee. It's just too expensive half the time. Yeah. Um, and I love like the 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 dark roast coffees from uh, Honduras and Colombia. And the I'm really getting really liking the Brazilian ones right now. But see, so that's why we always need to interact with people because we learn so much more about ourselves through other people. Like, I would never have a cereal tasting cup of coffee. Only because... I never even knew that they existed. Only because I don't even... I like my coffee dark and bitter. So yeah. just that, that, thinking about that flavor on it. So it's, it's interesting. So thank you for sharing that. Oh, bro, broadening my horizons on the many different kinds of coffee out there. And I love their, their artwork. I love their whole branding. 
And yes, uh, I do. T I absolutely do love their branding. Like the, the, the it's all very, um, it, I, I didn't at look into like why they came up with this branding, uh, but all their stuff, like even the unicorn, it's a skeleton. It's a skeleton on the unicorn. Um, but everything oh, yeah. is like the other one, the regular coffee is Frankenbones and has like a picture of Frankenstein on there. So it's very Halloween ish, you know? Uh, <clears throat> so Michelle wrote, so good morning, Marina uh, Rivera's on. And, oh, hi, Marina. And, uh, Michelle wrote, uh, still drinking instant decaf. I only had about a half a teaspoon left, so it's really weak this morning. So <laughs> these may put Margie over the edge. I think Margie's too, she's too tired to care. <laughs> no, I'm cringing. Where does Michelle live? Do, do I get to meet her when I go to Connecticut? Sure, absolutely. Okay, all okay. right, Michelle. Michelle, I'm gonna, uh, you and Lori are gonna come over my sister's house. She doesn't know this yet, but we're gonna do that. And then you, you, I'm gonna give, make you a real cup of coffee. And we're buying Michelle a coffee maker, too. That's, uh, so we're gonna get son, you a one thing if you want. My son in law, Arjanis, is on. Good morning, Lillian just Good joined. Morning, Buenos Arjanis. dias. Good morning, Lillian. Hi, honey. Yeah, so excuse me, people. I'm gonna be. Drawing my eye and probably my mocos this morning, so bear with me. She's um, drawing her eye because she's so happy to be on the show this morning that it's she's getting very emotional. That's well, you know, this is my baby, so I was like, oh, I had to, I, I didn't sleep all night, and I, I kept tossing and turning. Finally, I said, let me go take a shower. Shower made me feel better. That's so, what my yeah. mother's catchphrase is. My mother always literally says that. Take a shower, you'll feel better. All the time, all the time. And I, at first I thought I wasn't getting better because I kept taking showers and I'm like, no, because it always like lifts my spirits up, you know? So here we um, are. So uh, Michelle says, I can't wait to hug you. Yes, that sounds perfect. That sounds great. Hug me, hug me. Yes, that's what she's Oh my God. We do 20 second Healy hugs, Michelle, heart to heart. So your heart has to come against my heart. And it's 20 seconds. So if you're up for it, let's do this. Lillian says, hola, ladies. Good morning, Lillian. All, All right. right. So let's do quickly do our intention and our mantra so that we can get Dory on because she's been waiting for patiently for a good 16 minutes. So um, what were you doing? You were doing the mantra, right? Yes. So let's yes. Do the intention. Um, so today's intention, if you want to close your eyes, that's fine. If you're driving, please don't do that. And uh, if you want to just take a moment. So the intention is to bring light into other people's day and to pause before responding in conversation and lead with empathy and love. So one more time, to bring light into other people's day and to pause before responding in conversation and lead with empathy and love. Ooh, powerful. I like that. So it's perfect for today's conversation. And what, how about the mantra to go with it? The mantra is, close your eyes. It says, I release all habits that are disempowering. I release all habits that are disempowering. Release them. Let them go. It's that easy. We hold on to shit thinking it's hard to let go. Just let it go. It's like that balloon you're holding on for dear life and one little swift of the arm, the balloon's gone and did you die? No. And that's how we got to look at things we no longer need. Let them go. Half the time we don't know, we don't need them. We just know it's there. So we just got to sometimes just release it all and then start fresh. And the funny part is when she came up with, when she told me this mantra yesterday when we had our meeting, she uh, she said she said the mantra and I said you've got to be kidding me that's what you came up with and she said yeah and I grabbed a piece of paper and I showed it to her and earlier in the day something happened where this awful like emotion came up for me and I got really annoyed and all I felt was okay I got to write this down and the word that I wrote down was disempowered that with that thing that came up made me feel so disempowered. And I wrote that, and when she said that, I like put the thing up and I said, this is what I wrote today, because that's how I felt today. So this was perfect, and it happens all the time to us. So yep. yes, perfect, those are beautiful. 
So um, let's get Dory on so we could start talking about being kind and showing love. So we're going to let um, Dory in. Yay, yay, yay. You're going to love her. And I also want Dory to just quickly tell, like, to talk about what she does. Um, Dory, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? I, we can. Uh, we can't see you, though. You can't see me, though. Yeah, is your okay. uh, video off? I'm trying to see where I can turn my video on. Uh, boy, I tell you, technology is so much fun. <laughs> Here we go. Start my video. Yay. Hi there. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We are well. How are you doing, Dory? I am awesome. Sitting here with my morning cup of tea, so cheers. Cheers. Good. Cheers. Before we get started and talking about the conversation, just um, tell everybody about Word of Mom Radio and and you know what you do. Okay, well, Word of Mom Radio, uh, we have been, we're in our eighth year at this point, wow. and we are sharing the wisdom of women in business and in life on Blog Talk Radio, and happily, we're syndicated to iTunes and Spotify and all the different great podcast feeds, and it's really fabulous because I have the opportunity to just share all of the amazing women that I have the opportunity to meet along the journey. And it, so we, at this point now, we record ahead of time because we're tired, you know, rather than trying to deal with the internet and weather and everything else, it just makes life simpler. Uh -huh. And we air Monday through Thursdays at 1 p.m. is when we go live. We actually just added a great new show called Mixing It with Nikki Chris. Uh, she's an award-winning indie artist, and so she's bringing some amazing independent women artists to our Music Mondays. So it's just a lot of fun. It you really to, is. You need to interview that's, Gladiator Guru. You have that's to awesome. Her. Well, come on the show. <laughs> By all means, come on the show. She's an artist, and she's a writer, and um, she is just a, she is the Gladiator Guru, so. She'd be perfect for the show, and um, and she's had she's got a great life story too. That's you know she's she's really gone through a lot of hurdles, so she would um, definitely be perfect for the show. So I'll definitely connect the two of you through um, email, and then you guys you could tell her give her the instructions on what to do and how to how to sign That'd up. That'd be great. I'm trying not to talk too much because then I'll end up coughing. But yeah, yeah, she's not feeling well, so. Uh, oh. So, and you yeah, have a <laughs> you have a million dollar smile. I oh, know, yeah. doesn't she? I know. Thank you. She does. She does. That's actually what. That's how Dory and I even met because she like wandered into a workshop that I was teaching, and all she just she wandered in smiling. <laughs> Either way, I because that's I love that I like doing that as well. And, and she's just, she was just sort of meandering through the house that, because it was the whole big, like a whole big thing going on in different rooms and different levels of the house. And, and she just wandered in and just started chatting with me. I wasn't even teaching the workshop at that time. She just wandered in and we started talking. And yeah, she has that, right? She just has that. You, you get, when you're in person with her, you get very uh, attracted to her energy, which is really nice. So it's That's awesome. Do what you do. Because you're taking your your love of life and people, and then highlighting that in in radio show, which is just fantastic. Oh, thank you. You know, it's funny. I interviewed someone yesterday, and uh, she's a speech pathologist, and we were talking about just all the different things to be looking for and things. And my middle son was speech delayed, and kind of shared a little bit of my history with that. And afterwards, she said, you know, I love that you do that. She said, I've been listening to some of your shows. And she's like, I really love that you talk about your life and you bring your experiences in instead of just, you know, being a host and letting your guest go, but never really being personal yourself. Right. And I, I, it's part of what Word of Mom is all about because we are sharing the wisdom of women in business and in life. And as somebody who went through that with their child, 
why wouldn't I want to share? You know, because at the light of the end of the tunnel, I have three kids. My middle son who was speech delayed is my only one with a degree. So, you yeah. know, it's like you don't know wherever you start isn't where you're going to finish. Exactly. And that's, you know, in order to be successful in anything you do, you have to be honest and share your life. You have to present yourself naked when you're, when you're offering something because how else are people going to come? I feel like even with Viva, we, we share our experiences no matter what the subject is, we pick a subject that we can relate to, and that's how we bring it forward. And I co-host Ajusta Tu Corona, which is a women empowerment brunch, and we do the same thing. We tell our stories. So when we tell our stories, people look at us like they can't believe we would once there. And it's hard to say that anything is possible. You know, and no matter where you come from, no matter how you drag your ass through the mud, uh -huh. you know, how many asses you had to kiss or whatever the point you got to where you're at and you got there on your own merits because you worked hard for it because you had, no matter what the chaos was, you still had that mustard seed of faith in yourself that oh, you were going to yeah, overcome yeah. it. And I think that when you, when you present yourself out there to speak like you do, like we do, we have to be raw and it has to be real talk because if not, what, what are we doing? I agree. I agree. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, especially the topic that you're talking about now, the mantra you just shared with everything that is going on in this country right now, boy, do we need to be talking about kindness. Boy, do we need to be talking about person to person. And, you know, because at this point now, I was talking to my girlfriend's daughter and I don't know, you know, with the debates, my biggest concern was that our children watch that. Oh, I don't even watch it. School-aged children watch that. Okay, baby, come here. Well, yeah, they watch two adults behave badly. They well, do it you know all what? the time. I, in I'm power. sorry, but I can't, I, can't, I can't fault Joe Biden for what he did. He I did can't time feel to shut up. that he behaved badly. Yeah, he was I just feel reacting. like he stood up for himself right. to a bully who literally was trying to do things to trigger his stuttering, all of those different things to try to throw him off his game. And I, my favorite part was when he was like, you know, I, I'm not going to talk about my family. I could say a lot of things about your family. And then looked into the camera and it was like, but it's not about, it's about your family. And trying to get back on track of what he was talking about, you know, and, and to ha and like I said, the biggest concern for me was our children watched this. Yes. And this is what they're seeing for those kids that are learning about this process. This is what they saw. This yeah. is what our supposed president is supposed to, I mean, really. It, so that's why I love your topic today, because boy, do we have to find the kindness again. We really do. It's a nightmare. It's crazy. Yeah, I, no. Think, no, I, think ahead, Margie. Say, I just think Margie. that they do that on purpose so that we don't watch. And then I, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, but I don't even know. Biden wasn't even talking. And I'm looking at them like, how is everybody falling for the okie doke that Trump is putting out there? Like, I'm so oh. embarrassed by the people that I know that talk about Biden. But... And, and how about the people that I know that are like, believe that Trump is going to make America great again. And I'm like, when did it, when wasn't it great? Thank you, Marguerite. I'm saying the same that when he, that whole mantra four years ago, I'm like, what I didn't get the hell? memo that we weren't great. Exactly. Like, when did I, we stop being great? Let me tell you something. I don't care who likes me, who doesn't. I'm a Democrat. When Clinton was president, it was eight years. He had the jobs program. He helped women get off of welfare, get into training, get into jobs that these women today hold high positions in hospitals, own homes, family homes, rental properties that were my students. Carmen mm -hmm. Nieves as well. We taught them this. There was no war. Unemployment was good. And then what happened? A Republican came in and then 9-11 happened. And then we had all that bullshit. Then Obama comes in, no wars, you know, things are getting good. Numbers, he picked up a, a decline economy from Bush. They wanted to blame him for all that. Here we are again now with the bullshit. And it's like, I don't care what anybody says. I, I'm, I believe what I believe. 
I think that Biden deserves a chance. Um, and I think we, we all need to like voice it out because if not, he's going to fucking win again. Well, you know what? The reality is people have to get off their, off their ass and vote, yes. especially the 18 to 25 year olds. That demographic could, could elect anybody. And Biden is not the lesser of two evils or anything else. He's not. How do we not remember that this man served as our vice president for eight years, got a failing economy and left a booming economy? They left a pandemic playbook. They left the pandemic team set up worldwide. And this man dismantled it. It's like, excuse me, this guy has served our country for decades and decades and decades. He is not the lesser of two evils. And forget it. I can't wait for Kamala Harris. I can't wait for those debates. Somebody put up a meme and it's like, man, Mike Pence has no idea what he's getting into because he's debating a black woman, man. You can't just do that. <laughs> you know, that takes years of practice. You know, <laughs> it's like, I'm and, you know, and, and you know what? I, I, this, here's where I want to interrupt because um, I, I'm, uh, to me, I'm going to say my opinion is that I'm just sick to death of bipartisan. Like, I, I, I can't stand Democrat, Republican half the time. I just want somebody in there that is going to freaking do the job correctly. And I want a damn woman in there. Do you realize that we are the only country that has not had a woman in power? Like, all these other countries have had women in power that, that like, like look, at, look at, I mean, England, like, these other big countries – I mean, and, and not only do I want a woman president, I want a woman president and vice president. I want them both. I want both females up there. I think well, you know what? Boldest thing to do ever. That's going to take time because sadly, there are women in this country who don't think a woman should be president. Yeah. It's not, not even just here. men, <clears throat> you know? So we got it. You know, women have had to go through whatever door we had to go through whether it's the back door, the basement door, the understate, you know, however it is, we have gotten where we have to go. So if our first step is a vice president, that's a woman, great. And an intelligent woman and a respected woman and the woman that made Brett Kavanaugh cry. I'm sorry. I will love her forever. <laughs> she made that man cry. I, that, you know, so I just feel... And, you know, the other thing, going back to Joe Biden, I used to be on NFIB, which is the National Fe in, uh, Federation of Independent Business. I was on their board of directors, a leadership council for years. We had to know the voting records of all of the senators, and this was before he was VP. Biden ha is such a bipartisan senator. When you look at his voting record, he voted for the American people. Because we can't say, oh, as Republicans, nothing they have is good. That's not true. But he was able, same thing with John McCain, they were able to work across the table. And that's what we need to get back to. Yeah, I This agree has with you. to stop. Mitch McConnell has made this them or us. And that's not what government is supposed to be. Right. It is supposed to be for the people, by the people. And that's where I feel that Biden has such an advantage and will be such a good president for this country because he has the ability to work across party lines, which is what we need. You know, this has to stop. It's not them or us. We're Americans. And again, that's why I love your kindness topic today, because we have to find that again. We have to. We've got to find a way to have the conversations again where people don't just shut their ears off. Oh, you're not saying what I want to hear, so I don't want to listen. Right. No. So let's talk about that. Let's, let's get into it. So some of the questions that I came up with, which is the irony of the first question, which you, you actually said, and you didn't even, Dory didn't even get a copy of the question, so she, she brought it up. So um, what is the state of our world country with regards to kindness and love? Why is it so hard to be kind? How do we define love? Um, in, uh, do we find it as, de define it as intimacy, self-love, 
Is sex part of the combination of love? Um, what can we do to be kinder and more loving? So let's start off with, um, we've already started to talk about the state of it. We're get, we'll get back to that, but let's talk about why is it so hard? Why do you think it's so hard for people to be kind? I think people sometimes get so wrapped up in their day-to-day -day frustrations that things aren't going the way they want them to or things like that, that they forget those little bitty things that you can do that are kind. Whenever I go shopping, you know, I mean, we're in the midst of a pandemic. I don't try to go to the store often, but whenever I do from the start, I thank whoever is there working because I'm there getting what I need and I'm out of there, man. And I disinfect it. They're there eight, seven, eight, nine hours a day risking their lives so I can buy flipping groceries and you can't just say thank you. You know, my daddy, I lost my daddy to this virus in May That's and so every time me too, but every time I talk to his doctors, his nurses, I thanked them and I was like, look, whatever's going to happen with my father's going to happen. Please be safe. You have families to go home to. And his doctor was like, you know, you are the only patient I've had whose patient's family that has said that. We get so caught up in ourselves. We forget that the other people in this world, in our sphere, need a little something. Yeah. What is it to say to somebody? And Marguerite, I was going to say it to you before. I love your hat Thank because you. I'm a hat wearer and things like that. Uh, you know, I'll be out and I'll see, especially an older woman dressed really well. I will tell her how lovely she looks. She took time to do that because she's trying to feel good about herself. What is it to just give someone a compliment? It it's makes nothing. you feel good too. And you it's know, nothing. You made somebody else feel good. It's you know? free. It's free. Exactly. Why, why I always compliment, even lipstick, I'm like, wow, that lipstick looks great on you. Sometimes they look at me like, like if I'm trying to come on to them or something <laughs> when I'm walking and I say hello to everybody. And my sister and my cousin would say, why are you always say hi to people? And they never say hi back. I'm like, because I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm not, I'm not, I right. say, I see them. I'm like, Hey, hello. And I walk, I said, we're walking, but you know, there's not for me to stop and for them to say, you know, when I give somebody a compliment, I love doing that. When I see a cashier, they're not smiling. They have, they wear the name tag. I'm like, Caroline, how's your day so far? You know, I said, smile. Look at that beautiful smile. And you know what? Because that's what you do. It's so free. But I think now with the pandemic and the fear setting in, a lot of people take being kind. They don't want people to think they're weak. So they want to be all, they act hard. And that's the sense I've been getting. Like, you know, oh, I got too much on my mind. I ain't got time for that. You don't have time for what? Right. To smile, to say hi. So, I, so yeah, it could be that they're so caught up in their own bullshit, right? That they don't think outside. They're, they're walking around with, with the, what, what are they called? The horse um, blinders. blinders, yeah. Or they feel like, you know what, like, you're nobody and they have too much on their plate to even look at you. Yeah. And that's, that's a sad reality. It's a sad reality. It's a very sad reality. It really, you know, it's so funny. My grandson, I take him for walks and we had to run into the drugstore to pick something up. And it was the cutest thing. He's in his stroller. He's two. And these people were working. They were stocking things up and he's like, hello. And they're saying, hello. And as we're leaving, he's like, okay, bye-bye now. I love you. And they were like, oh, I love you too. And he's throwing them kisses. Because it too, uh, you love everybody. Yes. Everyone you see. He throws people kisses all the time and whatnot. And it was just so sweet. That now, if you did that to them, I love if, you too. If, if you did that to them, they would think you're a little weird. Bye-bye, I love you. Right, exactly. But, you know, when you're two... You can get away with that, yes, but yes. what it did for them, the, their faces lit up like candles. Yes. I mean, what is better? And see, that's the thing. We forget to approach the world like children. We forget the wonder of it all. 
Yeah. You know, I open up the windows this morning and, and the leaves are starting to change. And, you know, I have to stop and just look because I'll always be 17 in my soul. I will always have that mm -hmm. joyfulness because life is just too short to go through life. Everything is a problem. I mean, let's face it. We're in the midst of a pandemic. Half of my life, word of mom radio, everything is going great. The other half of my life literally closed down in a day. You know, my, my business, I have a company, we have a line of clear bags and backpacks and stadiumbags.com, do the math. There's no sports, you know? And so can I wallow in that? This is my life's work. I got 20 years invested in this. You know what? It's going to come back. I focused on what I could focus on. I can't do negative. Negative is such an energy suck for me. And I, I, it's just not where I can be. I, I, I've never been able to be there. My brothers still call me Mary Poppins. And I don't care. Because <laughs> there have to be people in this world that can just enjoy life yep. for what it is. And not Absolutely. make ever. I mean, because let's face it. Everything can be a problem. Everything. Everything in the world can be a problem if you want to make it one. I think, I think I've noticed this. I, I've, I've really taken this topic for the last couple of years, especially the last year, and really have analyzed it. I have, I have analyzed myself. I have been very aware. Um, I've also analyzed other people. I've done a lot of reading. And I've listened to a lot of podcasts and, and, uh, and, and watched videos on this. And I think that mo I think a lot of people do like to be kind. But I think that their fear is that if they're kind, they'll be taken advantage of or it won't be received. And so that's the, the two pieces that I started to really look into. So let me take two, let me take one of them first. So if they're kind, uh, they're gonna be taken advantage of. No one ever said that being kind is really weakness. They just assume this. You could be kind and still have very healthy, strong boundaries. You're mm -hmm. kind to somebody and you give them, you, you're compassionate to them, but then, if they've proven to you that they are not worthy to receive that, you don't be a jerk to them. You just cut them off. That, that's, the way, that's the way the boundary would work. Um, the other piece is that there's always a catch to it. So like I've been around people who were kind, and if you didn't reciprocate in the way that they thought was appropriate, the switch turned on and they weren't kind anymore. And it's like, wait a minute, you were just kind, and maybe I just wasn't paying attention or I wasn't just like doing it as you thought I should. And then they shut it off. Oh, well, if you're going to be like that, you're like, wait, and weren't you just kind to me? And then all of a sudden not. And, and, but because it comes down to this, that it all is about us. It's all about our own insecurities. It's about what, how we value ourselves. Because if, because first of all, I know myself and I know Dory and I know um, Gladiator Guru and I know that we are all very strong personalities and that we love ourselves and we also love our kindness. That our kindness is not just given to certain people, to certain, you know, uh, socioeconomic level of people. Like kindness is just kindness across the board. Mm -hmm. And if you, if you're, if we're kind to somebody and the person is rude to us, we don't take it personally. We say, okay, you know, I mean, on my worst days, maybe I'll be like, damn, you know, but, but most of the time you just run it off. You just be like, okay, whatever. But that's just the piece I think, right? Is that when, when we don't take things personally and we just say, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to smile. I'm going to be happy. I'm going to be kind and considerate to people. And if they're not going to receive it, that's on them. It's, it has nothing to do with me. I'm not going to change who I am to satisfy whoever is out there that I'm coming into contact with. And yet we do it all the time. People will switch. They'll be like, well, that guy's such an asshole and blah, blah, blah. And you know, that person just really pissed me off. And, and then all of a sudden we lose the kindness. And, the, and, and then the minute we do, it shuts us off. Like it, it literally shuts our brain off to any type of, and our heart, to any type of compassion, to any type of, uh, of understanding and we, and we grapple with it, like I said, because then we say, oh, well, but if I'm too kind and if I'm too compassionate, then 
then people are going to take advantage of me. No, not if you know who you are and why you're doing it. Does that, th th right? Does it make sense to both of you? I mean, Listen, I think that we are all a work in progress forever until the day we die. Mm -hmm. I think, I believe because this Absolutely. is how I am. When you're raised on survival mode um, and everything coming at you, you have to observe, you have to study, you have to read their body language and not listen to the words coming out their mouth. When you're raised in that kind of atmosphere, are you familiar with Bridgeport, Dory? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was born and raised in Father Panic. So when you're raised with an Italian mother and a dark-skinned Puerto Rican father, so we were always fighting. Um, so when you come there, you, you, you do, you know, you, you navigate through life and then you see what works and what doesn't and you study and you learn and you adapt to a different way of life. But the underlying of survival mode is always there. Now, Lori, you know, sometimes I'll be like, you know what, that's their issue, not mine. Other times it's like, you know what, I don't want to bother with the bitch no more because I keep trying and trying and they, they try to undermine me. And sometimes we should have a limit of how, you know, I don't sell my kindness. I'm good to you because I'm good to you because it's easy for me to be good to you. But after the second and the third time you're trying to cross me, then I have to check you off. But that's the boundary. And there's no and, with having a boundary. Absolutely not. No, there's not because I lost my dad 13 years ago and I lost my husband three years ago. And what death mm -hmm. has taught me is that we don't have time to waste time. Mm -hmm. So I'll be good to you once. I'll be good to you twice. And the third time, if you're still not getting me and expect me to always be good to you, then you know what? You need to move to the back aisle of my life. You can no longer sit in the front row of my life. And I think that with us realizing that we are a work in progress forever, that we can learn and be up here and be happy with ourselves. And it'll take that one particular person to bring us down a couple notches. And then we have to work back up. That's fine. We're going to fall. We're human. I can fall seven times as long as I keep rising on the eighth and be fine with myself. Because not everybody deserves a front row in my life. But there's no limit as to who I will be kind to. I will be kind to everybody. Because I know what it is not to be kind to. I totally, you know what, I'm right there with you. And it's funny, I have two different things that I kind of live by. First, other people's opinions are none of my business. That's nope. correct. That's their issue. So what other that's people, if, if you have a bad feeling about me or whatever, you know what, that's, that's on you. That's I your issue. Who I am. <laughs> and the other thing I really live by is I'm res you're responsible for your actions. I am responsible for my reactions. Correct. Yes. So if you want to be negative and mean to me, that's on you. I choose not to buy a ticket to that dance. Yeah. I just choose it. I'm not going to get down and sling in the mud with you because that's where you feel comfortable being. Right. I'm happy to throw you a towel so you can wipe your face when you decide to get out of the mud. But I'm not going to get down there and wrestle with this. I just, fun. I refuse to do that. I just, and believe me, I, Marguerite, like you, I'm Spanish and Italian too. I'm at to actually, I'm Spanish, Italian, Puerto Rican, and Polish. Oh my so, God. Exactly. And believe me, can I have a temper? I grew up in New York. I was born in the Bronx. And really? people are like, oh, you don't sound like a New Yorker and stuff. It's like, yeah, piss me off. Yeah. And then you'll see really quickly how fast I can start talking. And I can start talking to you like this. I will bite off your head and spit down your neck before yeah. you even blink. But I choose not to be that. And then she's I gave up for Lent. It's so funny. Like 15, 16 years ago, I gave up losing my temper. That's what I gave up for Lent. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to lose my temper. And 16 years later, I still try to hold that. I really do. When I feel myself getting, that's you know, where I'm going to expect ever, that's I the take a breath ever, but I'm serious. I take a breath. The only people that can really piss me off where I'm going to lose it are my kids. Yeah. Even as adults, it's amazing how they can they have the, 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 the combination to that. Uh, yes. They, they're really good at that, by the way. It's, isn't it amazing? And you know what? I'll bite my tongue. I really do. I, I count to 10 like my mother used to. You know, and, and I'm like, okay, you know, because I'm not going to, I try not to react that way. 
It's hard. I really do. When you come from it a life hard. Long, like Especially, my- like I said, with everything going on and when you have, you know, the person in power applauding people being vile to each other, encouraging it, inciting it, and wanting it, it makes it that much harder. It, you know, I'm not rolling around in all of this mud. I'm not doing it. Right, but that, stay- and, but that becomes our responsibility. It as does. And grandparents to, um, and, and friends and, you know, just to, to teach people not to be that way. Because so one of the yeah. questions is, how do we become kinder? And we didn't even talk about the love piece at all, which we can get in before we go. But how to be more kinder is it's a, it's conscious. It's you have to be conscious of what you're saying, how you're re- like you said, responding as opposed to reacting. You have mm-hmm. to be conscious about making a choice of how you interact with people, and then decide this is who I am. I'm not going to change that. And yes, you can you can write people off like, you know, uh, Gladiator Guru was saying, because it's, it's okay, because it's a boundary, but right. you make that decision. So when you leave your house today and you say, I'm going to be kind today, and if people are not worthy to receive it because they've been jerks, just let it go and move on to the people who are worthy to receive it, because we do that sometimes. We get caught up in the people who are absolute a-holes and then we, we get into a bad mood and then all of a sudden we start spreading that like disgusting poison. And then the people who are deserving of receiving your beauty and kindness and love are not getting it. And, and then they don't win on that. And it it's becomes like a lose-lose situation. So it's mm. about being, you know, we have to just say to ourselves, I am going to be kinder today. What am I going to do to be kinder today? Like, what is it that I'm going to do? Think of things to do. I don't, well, to me, when I go out, it's just natural. I'm like, I'm with I'm, you. I'm but it's magically, not natural for everybody, though. But, yeah. but for me, I'm magically orgasmic. So what I'm going to do is when I go out there, I'm going to be me. And like I say, when I give, it's with no, no um, expectation that I'm going to yes. get it back. Right. So that, I think if you start off with that, if you have no, if you say hi, right. don't expect somebody to say hi to you because then you're exactly not, right. then it's not natural. It's not a right. natural occurrence that you're just being kind. <laughs> that's expecting something in return. And then that's, that's where correct. people get upset. Like it's, if I hold the door for somebody, I don't care if they say thank you. That's I'm right. walking out. And then you got people saying, why? They didn't even say thank you. And I have to tell whoever I'm with. So what does that matter? We were walking out. They're walking in. Yeah. It's a gesture. It's a kind gesture. Yeah. And, and you know, um, Dory, <clears throat> I left my rage because I, I had horrendous rage. I had rage where I would go to your house and kick your door in with my bats. That was my rage. And I left my rage in Spain. Uh, a month after I buried my husband, I went on the 500-mile walk from France to the end of Spain. And I went by myself. I was there for a month and a half. And I walked every day. I almost died climbing those mountains. But I I prayed. I met people from all over the world. The kindness that was shown to me when my feet were swollen in total strangers. And I left it there. When I came back, my kids were like, where's Margie? Margie would never let this happen. Somebody wronged me or somebody said something. They were like, uh, where's Margie? Because Margie needs to come out and let these people know. And I'm like, you know what, Margie's sleeping right now. And that's where I want her to be right now. And that has helped me. I'm not to say she don't pop up every now and then when she needs to. But it's not something that <clears throat> I, I, I put that, you know, that, that's in the, the back seat mm-hmm. as well. So we need to do that. But on top of that, even when I was a rageful being, um, I was still kind. And, and because, like I said, I'm going to say it again, I'm magically orgasmic. And when, I'm, when you're magic, there's nothing that can penetrate you unless you allow it. And you're right. It's the people who know us from top to bottom that we allow them to, to you know, put on that, that fuck you kind of attitude. Because how dare you? You know me. And, but strangers, no. My kids, eh, I... You know what? I told my kids since they were little, I'm your mother to my last breath. You disrespect me. I don't care who you're married to, how many kids you have. Wherever you disrespect me, I'm going to drop you. 
My kids are 34 and 30. They know. They, they know how to speak to me because they know I'll drop them. You know, it's so funny not, that you say that. Mine are, a, lot, a, a lot of parents allow their kids, oh, they're 18. No, my last breath. You're my baby till my last you. breath, not your age. And my, my boy's a big one. He's like, you can't hit me. I said, Rob, you know, my bat will work just fine. Try me. So they know <laughs> not to try me. And I love my kids. They call me every day. They, they ask for their blessings before we even go into a conversation. Yeah, they're amazing, her kids. Absolutely. And, and you know what? Tiffany got two kids. My son has a 10-year-old. So it's like, you know, but they know I'm mama. They'll, they'll take me right to that limit. And once, my, once I stand up, they're like, all right, I was just kidding. <laughs> you know, but, but we have a great relationship. Why? Because it was built on respect. I listen mm -hmm. to them. I give them advice on how they should do it. Anytime there's a situation or scenario going on in their lives, I'm the first one they call. And if they're wrong, I put them in their place. And then they probably won't speak to me for a day or so because the truth hurts. Then they'll come back. But that's being kind as well. That's giving the best of me, knowing they're going to be upset with me, but it's still giving the best of me to encourage someone else to be the best of themselves. Exactly. So it it doesn't know, cost me anything. That's right. And you know, the, let's face it, the job of mom is a lifelong occupation. We don't, we don't get to retire from that. No. But it's so funny because I was saying the exact same thing. You know, if you do the parenting thing right when your kids are little, the friendship will naturally evolve as they become adults. But every once in a while, they'll step that line and it's like, guys, I'm your mom. Do not forget that, you know, my son one time, he was cursing and I was like, hey, he goes, when do I get to curse around you? I was like, never. I'm your mother. Just respect who I am. You're cursing as a descriptive, that's fine. But when you want to talk to me, do you use that language yeah, with me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ever. because, it, it, yeah. You know, and, <laughs> and it's like, you're right, mom, sorry. You know, and because you have to. You know, there, there comes that time that, that that one thing, that being a mom, it, like I said, lifelong occupation. I'm a grandmother now. I have a grandson. I have a, a three-month-old granddaughter. Aww, congratulations. Nobody tells you how wonderful that is because they're the, the unconditional love. The unconditional love of a parent is one thing, but then you have your grandchildren. These are the only people you don't have to say no to. I'm not <laughs> responsible for raising them. Please, thank you. Did you wash your hands after you went to the bathroom? <laughs> that, my job is done. Other than that, can we do this? Of course. Can we have yeah. that? Yes. Can we go there? You, of course, sure. I, not my job. Not exactly. my job. And it's so funny because I'll be there with, and I try so hard not to be Marie Barone. Remember from Everyone Loves yes, Raymond? Yes, from Everybody Loves I, I try so hard not to, because I'll, I'll bite my tongue. I'll see them doing things. But then when they ask for my input or my advice or whatever, I'm happy to share it. I do my level best not to just go blah, 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 about <laughs> something that I'm seeing that they're doing. But, you know, it, it's, it's just, it's a whole different place in life. And it's funny because now both my sons now are fathers. My sure. daughter hasn't started yet. So now that they are fathers, words that I said as their mom are starting to come back to them and going, huh? Now uh -huh. I understand this. Now I understand that. Because let's face it, as parents, the easiest thing in the world is to just let your children do everything. Yeah. Anything and everything they want. Why get it? But then what kind of people are you raising yeah. in this society? You're enabling assholes. That's what you're doing. That, thank you. That's and what they you're won't doing. be kind. And they won't be kind. <laughs> no, it won't. It's so funny because I look <laughs> at my grandson and it was so funny. He was about 14 months old. And I had put him into his crib and I gave him a cup of water to take with him in case he woke up. And he was like, thank you, Mimi. Aww. And I was just, my heart literally melted into my knees hearing him say thank you to me. And because every time I handed him something, thank you, please, yes, please, thank you. And my son, my daughter, you know, all of them doing that. And the fact that this is just a natural thing to him. He sneezes. I say, bless you. Thanks, Mimi. Yeah. It's so cute. And it warms my heart every single time because manners, things like that start in a high chair. Yeah. We have to teach our children to be loving, to be kind. 
when we're out and he sees people, hi, friends, hi, friends, because they're all, you know, and we should have that. You know, yeah. and it's funny, as you were talking before about cutting people out of your life and stuff like that, I, like you, Margie, I don't think about being kind to people. It is my natural reaction. Yeah. They don't say thank you to me. I'll still say you're welcome, you know, and just smile, walk away. I, people mistake kindness sometimes for weakness, as we yeah. were talking yes. about before. Right. It is the strongest thing in the world to be kind. The weakest thing in the world is to be mean. Yes. yes. That's, you know. That, it's easy. It's easy. It's and you close so easy. Off. You close off when, you, when you're mean, you close off. And it is. It is. It's actually the, um, the weakest and the least brave thing that you can do to be that way. So exactly. Very minimal brain cells to do that. To be kind and to, and to have the, no expectations and to just step out and just be yourself. That is the most courageous, bravest thing that you can do. And it, and it really requires a lot more thinking. It requires, even though you say this is very natural to you, it still requires more thinking and more use of brain cells than would be if the person just... It, it's natural. But remember, I said, you know, uh, I'm a work in progress forever. I come from yeah. Anna Marie de Tuzzi Bordino and Miguel Ángel Ramírez Ayala, you know? <laughs> and so... And, and just being raised the way we were raised. So it does. I, I had to discover what my strengths were. I had to learn what I wanted out of life. That's why my 18-year-old my granddaughter calls me. We're doing essays for her college intros. Essays for, you know, my 14-year-old, my my he's going to be 14 in a couple of days. He'll call me and ask advice on certain things, girls and all that. My 10-year-old, he lives in Connecticut, but we're constantly on the phone. Uh, texting, doing voicemail, FaceTiming, they seek me because when I'm with them, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, I'm that cool grandma, but they also know that I'll tap that ass if they get out of line. <laughs> and they know that my daughter was like, laugh my ass off, so true. And my cousin is like, yeah, that's my mom, Marie V. So it's like, so everybody can relate to certain things. And I think that as long as we... You, Put that, put that kind hat on, you know, pick it up, that invisible one, draw it however you want and put it on when you leave your door. Because, you know, when I go out there into the world, I think about when my kids and my grandkids are out there in the world and I'm not there to protect them because I'm that, I'm that, you know, Wonder Woman bitch, right? So if I'm not there to protect them, I'm praying that the angels shield them. So if, if I'm out there and I'm being kind to strangers, I want people to be kind to my people. You understand? Yep. And that's just the way, that's the karmic world. You know, you get what you give. And if I'm kind, it doesn't cost me a thing. And I teach my son, since he was little, opens the door for people. You know, Tiffany will buy anybody groceries. And that's how they were raised. If you got, then share what you have, because then you'll never not have. Right. You know, I agree. I agree a thousand percent. I always taught my kids, it's like, you do things for people because you can not because you expect anything in return, because you know what? It may come back to you. It may come back to your children. Karma yes. continues on. You yep. do things, leave a good path. Just leave a good path. And, and you know, all three of my kids, it's the, the most wonderful thing to me is that their friends will come and hug me. And it's like, wow, are you Rob or you're Dan's mom or Courtney's mom? Can I give you a hug? And They'll always say, you know, they're like the coolest person or the kindest person or the most loving person or the best friend I've ever had. And all three of my kids are like, well, then thank my, give my mom a hug because yeah. I am who I am because of my mom. Uh, and no, my it's the most, what better compliment could you possibly have in this world than your children's mm -hmm. friends saying something like that? Oh you? my God, it's you awesome. Know? It's, it's awesome. Like, I'm serious. <laughs> it's the best because, you know, this is the best I have. Somebody interviewed me once with my bag company because we had just, you know, launched. We did something on Good Morning America and this and that, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. And they were like, is this, you know, your most proud accomplishment? I was like, no, that would be my children. This is just my business, but Amen. I'm really excited about that. And she was like, wow. Okay. Yeah, You know, and afterwards she goes, got to tell you, you're the first business person that has ever said that on our show. 
it because it's natural. And I'm like, that's so sad. How could you, you know, nothing I will ever do in this <laughs> world will equal those children. And you all know your moms, nothing will ever be more precious. What better gift can we bring to this world than raising good people? Oh raising God. decent human beings who actually care about their fellow man and woman. You know, it's so funny. When my kids were young, I never talked about the girl that they would find or the boy that they would find. I always talked about the person they would find because we need to realize as people, we deserve things. Not because you're a man or not because you're a woman. I mean, look at what is going on for women right now. We just lost a Ruth Bader Ginsburg who mm. opened all these doors for women. Do you realize until the late seventies, a woman couldn't get a credit card unless a man co-signed until the eighties, you couldn't get a loan unless a man was co-signing for you and stuff. This was all because of her. And now there is somebody up on the Supreme court who's walked through all those doors and ready to shut them behind all of the women coming after her. This is really frightening. I mean, I've already lived through Roe v. Wade, you know, and I've watched people walking around, you know, the anti-maskers, I hate those phrases, but, you know, and with the sign, you know, my body, my choice. I'm like, yeah, tell that to my fucking uterus. I'm sorry, you gotta be <laughs> kidding me. You know, don't talk to me about wearing a mask is your choice. I don't wear a mask to keep me safe. I wear a mask to keep you safe, you know, because right now we don't know what is happening. And on a personal level, this took my father, you know, yeah. I know what it is to have that empty chair at a table. I didn't get to see my daddy, mm -hmm. you know, I got to talk to him over the phone every day and sing to him and everything else, but I wasn't there to say goodbye to him. I got to pick up his ashes though. And I went to my best friend's house and there we are sitting there in our mask and she had a napkin at the table and it said, what is your superpower today? And I was like, well, I was strong enough to pick up my daddy today. That was my superpower that I got to take my father's ashes in a box and a bag. You know, that was my superpower. So don't talk to me about how you don't have to protect other people. My, your health isn't my responsibility. Of course it is. Of course it is. This is this lack of kindness that this administration has put forth. Because if we had a president who said, hey, look, it is our responsibility to keep everybody safe. Here's my mask, put yours on. Let's keep it. We would all be doing it, but yeah. no. no. You know, because he knows more than the scientists. You know, that's part of being kind too is realizing you don't know everything. That's right. Yep. And that Absolutely. anyone yep. can teach right. you something. Yes. If your mind is open, you can learn from a two-year-old who could just say, I love you, I love you, hi friend, hi friend, because <laughs> we should all be each other's friends. Exactly. You know, <laughs> this, is, this is what it's all about. You do things because you can. Not because I want, it's not a tally sheet where, okay, I've done all these great things. So wonderful things will just come flooding my way. You bring the wonderful. You are the wonderful. So celebrate it. We celebrate are. It. We're, we're celebrating each other today. Exactly. And, and I love that. I and really the kindness. do. And um, I'm so happy that I made myself get up and take my shower to be here. And I am feeling a little better. Um, Good. <clears throat> I'm still like congested, but we need to, um, Dory, I would love to have you back as a guest. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, but back to the parenting, you know, um, the badass Buddha over here, she always, <clears throat> I'd love to watch her with her daughter because her daughter goes out into the yard and picks up toads and frogs and all this kind of stuff. And Lori encourages her excitement for the life. Because that's what she's, she's, you know, she wants to find life outside and all that. And to me, that is, that's really huge because half the parents don't have time for that. Right. Like, don't be touching that, wash your hands and all that. So I always wanted to tell her that. So I think as parents, mm -hmm. that's our biggest thing. 
I think um, that this was, this was, listen, and your voice is so, like, my, you have my cousin, of course it is. My cousin's, like, <laughs> going um, excited over here, Iris, for everything you spoke on. So, yeah, we just need to um, get back. And before we, before we go, because we're, 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 like, over time, but I just wanted to <laughs> say a couple of things that were said. So, Michelle said, uh, when clients would apologize for their kids making noise in the background of phone calls, I would tell them to please not apologize for joyful noise. Hearing happy children was the highlight of my day. Um, Marina, uh, uh, Marina Rivera says, you have to dress yourself in Teflon and let it resbalar de ti. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Anything personal. And then Michelle wrote, Dory's my favorite guest ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Marina, Marina, my aunt in Puerto Rico used to always tell me, mira, Margarita. Every morning, put a lot, you know, Vaseline on. Visualize yourself putting a whole bunch of Vaseline on. And when you go out there and people try to put their shit on you, let it just, let it Yeah. And so mentally go. that you would do that so that no, none of the negativity of others would attach to you. And since we were little, she always said that. So I said, yeah, um, let me see here. Tiffany said, amen. Um, Iris said, that's my mom. She said, exactly, of course it is. I laid in the driveway with Abel yesterday and looked at the stars. Oh, so, yeah. Abel's her grandson, who's five. Aww. So yeah, so yeah. So it's been a, a pleasure. This was like phenomenal. Yes, and we didn't even get a chance to really talk about love. So maybe what we'll do is we'll have another part, and we'll just talk about love with you. Awesome. That's you how. know, it's funny. I'm a Christian woman. Love is really easy. <laughs> like is harder. Yeah, yeah. Easier to love people than to like people. Yeah, and that will be the topic. Like it is. It is. And, and when, when even the people that I love, I would tell them, I will always love you, but I'm not going to like you all the time. Yeah. You know and what? I think I, it's important to say that because you will right. lose your temper. You are going to have a down day. Yep. And to me, I would always tell my husband that even when he was paralyzed with ALS, I said, you know what? I'm not liking you today. So, and it has, mm -hmm. and so just give me my time because I was his full-time caregiver for five and a half years. So there would be those days where, you know, and, but it, I told them that when we first met and I tell my kids that all the time because I'm going to have those days. Right. And it's probably not even not, and they did. I'm just not going to like nobody this day, but I'm going to let them right. know so that they don't feel offended, you know, because they need to know it's not personal. And so I, I totally believe in all of that. Totally yep. believe that if you just be honest, I love you with everything. I just don't like you right now. So don't That's bother right. me. Give me an hour, maybe more, but yeah. <laughs> so Dory, thank you. Dory, thank you so much for coming on today. We really, really appreciate it. And we definitely are going to have you on again for sure. I and love it. Tune into Word of Mom uh, Radio. We'll, we'll put in the uh, description some information on um, how to, to see you or listen to you. And um, so, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. We really appreciate it for Tuesday's show. We're going to be talking about the topic is how big is too big, how small is too small. And we're going to let you tune in to figure out what it is that we're talking about when we're saying those things. And, um, and so basically, everybody have a really great weekend. And um, Dor again, Dory, thank you so much for coming on. My pleasure. Thanks for having um, me. It was so much fun. And um, so I guess that's it, right? Um, Gladiator Guru, you have one last thing to say or are you good? Good. You're good. All I right. think, yeah, everybody, thank you for coming on and for participating and for sharing your little insights. And my cousin says, yes. I love Dory. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. So, yeah, so well, thank you to that. everybody. See? <laughs> it's a lot. So, be kind to everybody today. Just set that, set that intention as well for today. There you go. And, uh, and remember, you know, from me, be you, be real, be extraordinary. Guru. And from, and from me, breathe in the beauty. Without the bullshit. Namaste. Nice week, everybody. We'll see you Tuesday. <laughs>